I unknowingly have put my children and family at risk by posting innocent back to school photos. Like literally standing right in front of the school sign, like just stand right there, say cheese. Posted that, I've posted family photos of us standing in front of our house with our house number. I've put in the caption their favorite thing that year, what grade they're starting, all the things. But that was in 2015. And now with AI, certain features in Snapchat that blow my mind, we really need to know as parents how to keep our kids safe. Now, I was never the type of parent that did Facebook right, especially when they came out with those really cute signs with your child's name, their teacher, their grade, their favorite things, who they wanted to be when they grew up, like all the things. But I remember when they first started like showing up on social media, I had a couple thoughts. The first thought was, oh my God, I'm such a failure as a mom. Like I would never be that organized. Like me that morning, it's just chaotic. And it's like last minute, it's like, oh my gosh, we need a picture, stand in front of the school sign. Okay, good, done, have a good day. But then my second thought when I saw all that, I was like, holy crap, how easy are we making it for predators? Today we're gonna to talk about the dangers of posting those innocent back to school photos because as parents and grandparents, we wanna capture and document milestones and moments like this and we wanna share it with our closest friends and family. However, we need to make sure we're doing it safely because unfortunately we have to consider cyber stalking, identity theft and exploitation. So we're gonna get into all of that, practical tips, products you can use, so let's get started. Imagine a beautiful Tuesday afternoon, sun is shining, it's just a typical day. You're stopping by the ATM to grab some cash before you hit the softball fields for your daughter's big game, and when you stick your card in to pull out the money or to type it in, on the screen just shows zero. You have zero dollars in your account, and so instantly you're, you're shocked, you're confused, a little scared, but you're thinking there has to be a mistake. So you get in your car, you head to your bank, you enter the sterile, like fluorescently lit lobby, and you make your way to the teller, only to find out, yes, indeed, all of your accounts are wiped clean. After the investigation was complete, you found out the hacker was able to game the system or answer all the security questions based on getting your son's name and birth date from his back to school photo. I mean, can you imagine you put up an innocent photo just to mark a special milestone and you end up smack dab in the middle of a financial nightmare? But when you think about it, those pieces of information that you can get from back to school photos, that would make it easy to answer some of the security questions, right? Like it's, it's actually crazy when you think about it. You're just like, oh yeah. I should always use the suggested passwords, always. But I'm always like, no. <laughs> I know it's stronger, but it's a little too strong for me. I'll never remember that. <laughs> now to the next serious issue, exploit. But before I tell you how serious this issue is, let me invite any newbies to the Mind Your Boundary community. If you are new here and you're learning something, make sure you hit that subscribe button, stick around so then you're notified when the next episode drops. Okay, back to exploration. Pred can use school logos, team names, and locations, all of which are pretty much identifiable in a lot of pictures that you see online. So what they do is they will find a kid that they want to exploit, they'll create a fake profile, make it look like they're also a 12 year old, and then they'll befriend or try to get added as a friend to your child. They'll start liking and commenting just nice and light on your child's posts. And then after about three weeks, maybe the grooming process lasts a little bit longer, they'll send them a direct message. Oh, I think we go to the same school. Oh my gosh, you're into soccer, so am I. And so they try to bond and build rapport based on similar interests. Super, super creepy. And once the trust is built, more personal questions are asked. Your child then is relating to them like a friend. Like they're asking, you know, how was your day? How was your home life? They're just getting more and more acquainted until they actually invite your child to meet up. That is the scariest part. Cyber tracking is another huge concern. So start use back to school photos to track families. Details like house numbers in the background, they can pinpoint, oh yeah, this is where that teenager lives or this is where my target lives. So just imagine you post a picture of your teenage daughter's dance team. They like won something and you take your daughter in it. A cyber could see that, they could go through your account, your public account, gather all the information they can about anytime you change jobs, where you went on vacation, if your husband is sick, you know, the funeral you had for your grandma, they can get all that information. Then they can go over and friend request your child, your daughter from the dance team. And then they do the exact same thing as the explorers. So that predator that was explored 
your child, the cyber hacker will do the same thing. They'll create a fake profile. They'll it will make it look like they're also a teenager, that they also attend the same school, that they have similar interests, and they will bond over this. And the closer that they get and the more personal the information get, then they start to use that information to tear their target. That is their ultimate goal. They want to harass, instill fear, and terrorize them. At least that's how I understand it. The difference between an exploiter and a uh, stalker is that an exploiter wants to get something from their victims, whether it's actually them or it's pictures, money, but a cyber stalker wants to instill fear like they get off on having power so that's another thing that you really have to think about but imagine if that happened to your teenage daughter I mean eventually it gets to the point where he's starting to say I know the paths you take to and from school I know where you park in the school parking lot I know that you went and had ice cream with your boyfriend I watched you have it like he's terrorizing her to the point that she won't want to leave her house I mean just think of the psychological impact it's going to have on your child both exploitation and cyber they do something extremely unsettling. If you think about how their relationship starts with your child, they befriend them and they build trust with your child. And so when that trust is broken, just like when we're betrayed as adults, your child with their child brain then has to think, oh my gosh, like, can I even trust my own judgment? So for a, a, an adolescent or child brain to start to question their own mechanisms, like, can I even spot red flags? Like, he can really mess our kids up in terms of future relationships. Not only the dangers in front of us, but it's also the repercussions on the back end. So when you think about the amount of damage that can happen, whether it's identity theft, exploitation, cyber once you hear these very simple tips, when you hear them, you're just going to be like, well, yeah, duh, why wouldn't I do that? So let's talk about some tips that are super easy and you can implement them right when this video ends. Number one, make sure all of your social media settings are set to private. That way, only your closest friends and family can see what you post. If for whatever reason you need to have a public profile, maybe you have a, a job or a business or something like that, then I suggest that you create a private Facebook group. And it's super easy, it's free, and your family then could share photos of that. That way. But I should mention, not only your social media profile should be private, your parents, like so if grandparents are posting photos, and also your children. So just make sure everyone just toggle that switch. It's a private account. Number two, avoid posting any identifying details. So this is like your school name, the teacher's name, the logo, locations. Just before you post a photo on your private account, you want to just like make sure there's nothing identifiable. And then also in the caption, just make sure the photo is clean and the caption is clean. And Number three, regularly check your child's online activity. So talk to them about the importance of not sharing any identifying information and then just make sure like in their posts that, you know, they're making sure the logo's not included, they're making sure they're not saying where they are, all that stuff. So very clear communication with them and then just also making sure that you're looking at it regularly. We have a rule that if you know the child physically from school, so you have to know Jack from school before you can add Jack on Snapchat. But if you've never met Jack in real life, he's not gonna be a friend. It's a very clear rule. Well, our son, brain goes really fast. He knows Jack from school, like Jack Jr. And then Jack Jr. friend requested him on Snapchat and he just quickly added him. Cause he's like, well, yeah, I know Jack Jr. Well, a few days after he added him, this male sent him photos and suggestion, like suggestive comments and texts asking if he wanted to meet up and hang out. Like a full blown 30 something hairy male. Luckily, like we have done so much talking with our kids, making sure they know like if anything feels weird, no matter what you've said back to them, if you've swore at them, if you've maybe flirted back with them, if you've sent suggesting photos back, it does not matter what you've sent to them, you will never get in trouble, come to us immediately. So right away, our son came to us, showed us what had happened, we went to the authorities and they took it from there. So even with the best rules, you know, stuff still happens. But the thing that saved us was just constantly talking to our kids about like truly no matter what you do. Cause sometimes kids, like I'm a therapist, so I'll talk to teens and they'll say, like I didn't want to tell my mom because I was our, I was swearing back at the person and like kind of bold them back or I didn't want to tell my mom because like we were actually talking kind of like inappropriate to each other. Well, I didn't want to tell my parents because I actually sent suggestive like some provocative photos back and it's like oh my gosh it doesn't matter what you do like come to me so you need to make sure your kids know no matter what and I know that's a different conversation but it's really important that you monitor their activity, but it's also important. I'm gonna say one more thing and it's totally a side tangent to this. I believe 
the snap map on Snapchat is the worst, absolute worst feature ever because if your child is not careful who they add to their friends list, a predator could get on their friends list and then whenever they have that map on it literally shows where your child is it tracks their habits and it can sh it shows like where your child is going let's say they're riding their bike to the park let's say they're riding their bike to ice cream let's say you know in in the predator can just be like mm, there's tommy like now i'm just tracking his habits every single day and i know exactly where he's going to be at certain times because now i know his summer schedule and he gets himself to and from swim class and then soccer do you see what i'm saying super dangerous so if your kids are on snapchat set a um a limit or a boundary that they cannot have snapchat or snap maps on with snapchat <laughs> let's get back on track i'm really sorry for that tangent i'm obviously very passionate about that feature i think it's extremely dangerous let's talk about some safer alternatives for sharing photos back and forth the first one is you can download and use the app family album which is free and it lets you share photos and videos with your family only another option is skylight frame so this is a digital fo photo frame that updates automatically with new photos sent by family so it's really perfect for grandparents i think you're kind of expensive but maybe I'm just too cheap. I think in the description I did link Skylight Frame, but then I did like Amazon's like best choice that is I think like a third of the price. And then the last option again is free and that is using Google Photos. You can put all your photos up there and then give certain people the links so then they can view the photos, download them, print them off, hang them on their fridge, whatever you want. But only the people with granted access get to see the photos. So now let's get to a couple questions from our community. Question number one, what if your child has already shared too much information online? So what I would do is right away, make sure that their social media settings are private. Then I would go through their friends list, make sure if they don't know the person in real life, they're out of there. I would remove any photo that reveals too much information. And then I would educate my kid going forward. Like this is why we need to make these um, changes and take these precautions. Next question. What do you do if you have parents who love to post pictures of their grandkids? Of course they do, right? They're so proud. First, I would send them this podcast episode. I would explain to them the dangers, have them watch it, see if they have any questions. Then I would go through the tips above, like making their profile private. That would be very, very helpful. And then just make sure that their friends, close friends are added to that list so that they know, you know, they're still seeing their grandbabies. You could consider asking them like to set up a group text with their friends. So maybe they have five, six people in their friend group. They could just have their closest friends in a, a text text thread on their phone, you know, like we all have like, you know, family group text and all this stuff. You could have, you could help them set that up. So then um, they can just send it to the group thread rather than social media. Just remember the goal is to still celebrate our child's milestones and document their journey, but we're just trying to do it in a safer way. So again, before you post a picture, make sure your profile is private. Before you post a picture, make sure you check it. No identifying information, no house numbers, no school logos, no uh, teacher's name, nothing like that. And then also check the caption just in case. Back to school is just around the corner. Like today before coming to the office, I was talking to my kids like, clean out your closets. Like let's get started for back to school shopping and setting up shopping dates. I cannot believe the summer is already over, but let's cheers to a healthy, safe and organized and like great start to the new school year. If you learned one thing today, make sure you hit that like button that tells the algorithm that this was good stuff and it'll push it out to more parents that need to hear this message. And if you learned two things, make sure you share this with at least one person so that more people are keeping our children safe. Okay, until next time, friend, make sure you keep minding your boundaries.